Simon Helps Carry the Cross A reading from Mark's Gospel A certain man from Cyrene, Simon, the father of Alexander and Rufus, was passing by on his way in from the country, and they forced him to carry the cross. They brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. And now a meditation. Why me? You could just say I happen to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. Some would say that. I'd only just arrived in Jerusalem to prepare for Passover. As I walked down the main street from the city gate, I noticed a commotion. But I saw that Roman soldiers were involved, so I wanted to stay out of the way, and I started to walk on. Hey, you! Come here! I stopped and turned. Yes, the centurion was pointing straight at me. Yes, you! You're to carry this. Bend forward. The large beam must have been about thirty to forty pounds. The weight of the beam thrust my weight forward as I balanced it with my arms, straining my neck to see my way forward, but I was strong enough. I was used to working on the land. I hated being involved in all this. I didn't want to see a crucifixion, and now I was in the middle of one. Surrounded by shouting men and sobbing women, and being forced back out of the city gates again. When I saw the victim, I realised why I was needed. His back was raw and bleeding from the flogging. He seemed to be half dead already. He was maybe a little younger than I. He'd obviously been strong once, but he'd lost a lot of blood. The soldiers were trying to quicken the pace. Of course, they were concerned about the time. He would have to die and be down from the cross before Passover, but he had to stay alive long enough to be crucified. So I was useful to both the Romans and the victim. I had passed Golgotha on my way in, so I knew how far it was. Thinking about it all later, I realised why they'd picked me. I am black, tall, strong, so I stood out in a crowd. I was clearly not one of the crowd, but an outsider. Jewish, yes, but not a zealot or anyone involved with the man's story. An African Jew, fresh from the country, just wanting to celebrate Passover. When we finally got there, they took the beam from my back and laid it down. I stretched, a searing pain in my neck, my arms strained and already sore and bruised. I felt humiliated, victimised, bullied, mocked. A powerless foreigner made an example of, and it was nothing to do with me. Then I saw the man. I'd only seen his back until now. His face had blood all over it too. They'd stuck some sort of a mock laurel wreath on his head, but it was made of thorns. He was looking at me, and as I looked at him I felt I knew him. And more than that, I knew that he knew me. Completely. That moment I knew I had done something of great significance by helping this man. He was a physical wreck already, and about to suffer so much more. But our eyes had met, and there was something glorious in that moment. King of the Jews, it said on the sign they hung there. Yes, I came to believe he was. This was Jesus of Nazareth. Of course I'd heard of him, but I'd heard he was possibly the Messiah, that he was healing the sick, even raising the dead. 
I had hoped to see him while I was in Jerusalem. He had entered Jerusalem on a donkey only a week before. We would all heard about that. But now they were crucifying him. Why? What had gone wrong? He wasn't some crazy zealot or a criminal. He clearly wasn't Messiah either. And yet, and yet, his face. I was confused. I saw his mother by the cross. Poor woman. As I walked back to the city, suddenly everything went dark, as if the sun had switched off. Then the ground started to shake. Everything stopped. No one knew what was happening or what to do. It was very frightening. Later I headed back to the country. On the way I passed Golgotha again. Everything had gone. The site, no doubt, was cleared in time for Passover. Yet my life had changed forever. Maybe you know what happened next. But we all became disciples of the way. My sons knew Paul. But I had helped Jesus and shared a little of his burden on that dreadful, wonderful day. And now a prayer. Then Jesus called the crowd to him along with his disciples and said, If anyone would come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Thank you, Lord, that you know what it is to be alone, weak, fearful, vulnerable. Even you needed another's help. After the cruelty of your flogging, taking up your cross was too hard on your own. Thank you that Simon was where he was needed rather than where he wanted to be. A help and companion on that dark road of suffering. In our dark times, when our cross seems too heavy, help us to admit our need for help from you and accept help through others. So many will be in need in these dark times. Teach us all to be willing to be where we are needed, open to your plans, open to your Spirit's guidance, perhaps to share the journey with those on darker paths in the strength of your love and grace, to bear one another's burdens. For in serving others, we are serving you as we go in your name. Amen.